my name is Zoe, I'm 13 years old, and I love to tell stories to the little ones. By the way, if you have any story requests, like, subscribe, and tell me your suggestion in the comment section. Anyway, let's get on to today's story. Today, we will be reading Snow White and the Seven Aliens as part of the Seriously Silly Story series. Here we go. Snow White dreamed of becoming a pop star. She wanted to be number one in the charts, just like her hero, Hank Hunk from Boy Snog. Snow White had a beautiful voice. She was a great dancer too, and she could even write her own songs. Only one thing stood in her way. Her wicked stepmother. Once upon a time, Snow White's stepmother had been a famous pop star. She had been the mean queen, lead singer in the wonderful Wicked Witches. But now her voice was croaky and she was no longer a star. She had become mad with the jealousy of Snow White. You will never be famous like me, she hissed. You look too ordinary. You don't even have a band, and besides, your nose is too small. Then the mean queen would storm out of the room, leaving poor Snow White to weep under the boy snog posters in her room. Snow White's father was a kind little man. He liked doing jigsaw puzzles and making small plasticine models. Although he loved his daughter, he was not strong enough to stand up to his wife. The mean queen had a huge dressing room at the top of the house with dozens of mirrors and shelves of makeup, as if she was still a great star. And sometimes she forced her poor husband to sit behind the dressing table mirror and tell her that she was still beautiful. The mirror, mirror on the wall, who has the cutest nose of all? From behind the mirror, her terrified husband would reply, Mean Queen, you look a uh, treat, um, with a nose as perfect as a uh, as a boiled sweet, <laughs> boiled sweet. <laughs> then the Mean Queen would scream with laughter and march around the house, croaking her ancient songs and remembering the day when the wonderful Wicked Witches had appeared on the Christmas edition of Top of the Pops. Now, Snow White often sat in the garden, surrounded by little birdies and bunny rabbits, singing quietly in her beautiful, clear voice. When she looked down, the mean queen would almost choke with the rage. Day by day, the mean queen could see that Snow White was growing into a very beautiful young woman. With that tiny pink nose, how the mean queen hated her. Only the mirror brought her comfort. Mirror, 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 tell me true. Is my lo nose as long as a didgeridoo? That girl's nose is microscopic. What are your feelings on this topic? <laughs> and the mirror would reply, If you push me, I must admit, Snow White's nose is um, a decent fit, but your nose, O oh Queen, is uh, is really small. In fact, it's hardly there at all. And so it went on, until one terrible night Snow White's father could stand the lies no longer. The mean Queen demanded, Mirror, mirror, above the sink, tell me what you really think. It's time you started coming clean. Choose Snow White or me, your queen. <laughs> In a tiny trembling voice, the mirror replied. All right, I've really had enough. I'm fed up with the lies and stuff. You are past it, old and sad. Crinkly, wrinkly, really bad. Your nose is s sort of long and hairy. Beside you, Snow White is a Christmas fairy. <gasps> the mean queen leapt to her feet. With a sweep of her bony hand, she sent her makeup and bottles of perfume crashing to the floor. She seized her husband by his collar and lifted him off his feet. 
get Snow White out of my house. She spat into his terrified face. Make sure he never, ever returns. The poor man crawled towards the door. But the mean queen had one more order. Something so terrible that her husband quaked in his sandals. To prove that Snow White has really gone, bring me that tiny snubby nose on a cocktail stick. <laughs> and so Snow White's father led his beautiful daughter far into the wild and dangerous city. With tears streaming down his face, he bought her an all-day bus pass and kissed her sweet daughter goodbye. Of course, he could not bring himself to cut off that precious snubby nose. So he quickly modelled a false one out of some pink plasticine which he always carried in his pocket. Then he brought back to the mean queen on a cocktail stick. When the mean queen saw the little nose, she screamed with laughter all over again. Then she did something so ghastly that her husband felt quite ill. She took the plasticine nose, dipped it in mayonnaise, and ate it. So it was a side of salad and French fries. Mmm, she said, licking her lips. Tasty. Meanwhile, poor Snow White wandered through the city, lost and alone. It grew dark, and she started to feel afraid. Then, in the distance, she saw a dim green light between the buildings. Faint with hunger, she stumbled towards it and found herself in the clearing by a car park. There in front of her was a gleaming silver spacecraft. A little ladder led up to a door where a flashing neon sign said, Swinging Spaceship Nightclub. Under this was pinned another smaller notice. This one read, Cleaner wanted, apply within. Too tired to feel afraid, Snow White pushed the bell. Quietly, the door slid open, and she stepped nervously inside. And so it was that Snow White began her new life as a cleaner at the swinging spaceship nightclub. The hours were long, the pay was poor, but at least some good bands played from time to time. Who knows, sighed Snow White. Perhaps I might even hear Hank Hunk from Boy Snog one day. One evening, Snow White was told to prepare the dressing room for a special band who would be playing that night. In the dressing room, she found seven identical chairs. Laid on the seven identical chairs, neatly, were seven identical space helmets. I wonder who will be changing in here, she thought. Just then, she heard strange voices singing outside in the corridor. Hi-ho, hi-ho, it's off to space we go. What an awful song, thought Snow White. I wonder who wrote these terrible lyrics. Hi-ho, 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 hi-ho. The door opened and in stepped seven of the most extraordinary creatures Snow White had ever seen. Hi, said the first stranger. We are the seven aliens. We are booked to perform tonight. We are number 4,324 in the pop charts, you know. Meet the band. Hi, I'm Scotty. Ho, I'm Spotty. Hey, I'm Dotty. Ho, I'm Snotty. Hi, I'm Potty. Ho, I'm Garotti. And what about you? <laughs> laughed Snow White pointing at the very funny-looking alien who had spoken to her first. What is your name? He's Butty, shouted all the other aliens together. Well, <laughs> giggled Snow White, I am very pleased to meet you. Now, if you like, I will polish your space helmet before you go on stage. While Snow White polished, she sang a sad and beautiful song. The seven aliens were entranced. That was wonderful, gurgled Grotty when she had finished. Tell us your name. I am Snow White, said Snow White. Oh, Snow White, sniffed Snotty. 
The truth is that we cannot sing for toffee, and the only words we can think of are hi ho, hi ho. If you had joined our bland, band, we'd blast up the charts like a rocket into space. And so it was that Snow White and the seven aliens played their very first gig at the swinging spaceship nightclub. Meanwhile at home, Snow White's father wept over his lost daughter until his jigsaw pu puzzles were soggy. The mean queen, on the other hand, was in a very good mood. She went to admire herself in her magic mirror. <sighs> mirror, mirror, spill the beans. Am I now the queen of queens? <laughs> now Snow White's nose is in my tummy. You must admit I look quite yummy. <laughs> but to her horror, the mirror replied, I don't want to shock you, Rotten Queen. But that nose was made of last scene. Snow White's nose is on her face. She's with some blokes from mouth to space. The mean queen turned purple. She smashed the mirror into a thousand jacket pieces. Back at the swinging spaceship nightclub, Snow White and the seven aliens had been a huge success. A record producer had heard them play and signed them on the spot. Snow White's dream was coming true. As Christmas approached, her single Snow White Alien Rap crept higher and higher up the charts, eventually even overtaking Hank Hunk and Boy Snog. Snow White and the Seven Aliens were booked to appear on the Christmas edition of Top of the Pops. Snow White was terribly nervous. She was sure the mean queen would do something to spoil her fortune. The aliens made her promise to lock her in the dressing room and not let anyone in but them. But with only half an hour to go before the programme, someone rattled the door and a voice called. Snow White, Snow White, the door is stuck. It is Hank Hunk, here to wish you luck. Snow White thought the voice sounded a little strange, but she just had to see if it was really Hank Hunk from Boy Snog come to see her. She opened the door a tiny crack. In burst a tall figure with blonde hair. It looked like Hank Hunk. But surely there was something strange about his nose. So, you're a pop star now, Snow White. But you will sh surely faint with fright. Your band are weird. Your song is crummy. You'll freeze on stage like a plastic dummy. The world will watch on TV. But you'll never be as good as me! <laughs> Alas! was the mean queen when the aliens come came to collect snow white they found her completely frozen with stage fright no matter how they tried to reassure her she simply could not move her arms and legs let alone dance or sing in despair they carried her like a statue out of the dressing room and laid her gently on the stage <laughs> it's no use bald body will you have to sing hi ho hi ho <laughs> the program started fantabulous christmas greetings pop fans called the announcer we've got a sensational seasonal lineup for you including the incredible new discovery Snow White and those seven extremely strange aliens. We've also got Hank Hank and Boy Snog. And later, when Snow White was unable to move, to the seven aliens, it seemed like a hundred years passed by. Then, at the back of the studio, someone began to push his way through the crowd. Let me through, he said. I'm a qualified heartthrob. I must see her. It was Hank Hunk. This time, it was really him. Snow White's heart began to flutter. Oh, Snow White, 
whispered Hank. Please sing. Sing for me. He bent towards Snow White. A long blonde curl fell across one eye. Gently, he kissed her lips. Snow White leapt to her feet. Okay, boys, let's groove, she shouted. Snow White and the seven aliens leapt into the spotlight and began to play. Across the nation, every family threw down their Christmas crackers and began gyrating to the fantastic sounds on TV. Everybody except one person. High in her dark dressing room, the mean queen stared into a shattered mirror and muttered, Mirror, mirror, smashed to bits. Today I really feel the pit. But her husband, jiving in front of the TV, called up to her. That's funny, honey. I feel quite perky. Come downstairs and have some turkey. If you're good, you never know. I might get out the mistletoe. On New Year's Eve, there were seven special guests at Hank and Snow White's wedding. Their names were Scotty, Spotty, Dotty, Snotty, Potty, Grotty and Botty. And they all blasted off for a honeymoon in the stars. Hi-ho, hi-ho. The end. Okay, that's it for today. See you next time. Bye.